In this episode, Nick the Van Man does Nick the Van Man things. And the truck will no longer be rolling probable cause. It'll be legal with a set of pipes on it. What are we doing today? We're gonna go get into the exhaust. First though, we gotta take a little field trip because rolling probable cause here doesn't have any exhaust and the sticker on the tag expired and I'm waiting on the sticker. So, trailer. I really love the way the open header sounds and because of that, I'm not gonna get like a really restrictive muffler. We're gonna use a set of Borla XR1s and as you can tell, there's baffling in there, but it should let it breathe just the same. I've got my 202 sensors. I'll show you what the other one's for besides the AFR gauge. Got my hanger hardware, got some flange hardware, gaskets, some flex joints, and the two adapters that come off the header. Now, I'll explain a little later why there's flex joints on this motor, but I think some of y'all can figure it out. So let's go get this thing loaded on a trailer. Let's go take this thing to the exhaust shop. Now, why am I trailering this and not just driving it? It is a very loud exhaust, and I don't think going through traffic would be a very good idea even though it's a short trip across town. Good morning. It is a beautiful fall morning to go get an exhaust system put on this old truck. 
make the quick drive across town to go to Nick's shop. It's a really good drive in. Don't know why my camera checks out as soon as it sees the cops. That was unplanned. We make it to Nick's shop, we fire this thing up. It idles up real good, let it warm up. People are literally sitting in traffic giving me the thumbs up as they hear this thing bombing away with a big old open header. I'm really gonna miss the open header sound because it just sounds like a race car. Beautiful sunrise, just a really good crisp fall morning. I'm so excited right now. Listen to it. And this is about the point where I make a mistake. I think it's warmed up enough to let my foot up off the pedal to let it idle by itself. And it dies. There's nothing I can do to get this thing to start. I'm clicking the ignition switch over and over, no matter what position I put the ignition in, how hard I try to get the ignition switch to be in the start mode, it doesn't want to anymore. So me and Nick go into deduction mode. We start looking at the ignition system. We look at the starter, we look at the mega fuses we check the 6al box nothing is out of order nothing's burned up nothing's cooked we eventually deduce it down to the ignition switch itself no matter what we did with the key from the ignition on to the start position that switch was not engaging that part of the switch so we took the ignition switch apart used a screwdriver and made it made contact and we were able to get this thing fired up back on track With it running, we can unload it off the trailer. Ooh, it still sounds good with that open header. Nick helps back me off the trailer. We're right next to a really busy street, so we're both trying to be very cognizant of what's around us, trying to be really safe. Truck backs off the trailer like a champ. For the record, this is also the longest journey this truck with this new motor has ever been on. So it being able to move under its own power is making this really convenient for us. Because it's quite heavy to push around. Goes right into gear. And we drive it right into the shop and put it up on the lift. Me and Nick go over what we gotta do, what components we got, where our challenges are gonna be, and then we just get started. And I think you're gonna like where this goes.
It'll take a minute. I got some people to thank because this thing is rolling really well. We do have a to-do list. It's not roadworthy yet. We'll get into that in the next one and I'll explain what's up. But first, Wayne, thank you for letting me use your trailer to run this thing back and forth and helping me make sure that when I put this thing up on the trailer, it was strapped down right. You went out of your way to come double check and make sure and I appreciate that. Thomas, thanks for helping me put the truck up on the trailer. The extra set of eyes was really grateful in the dark. Much obliged. And cannot forget, Nick and Mike for letting me have basically free reign of their shop while they were working. I absolutely appreciate it. Customers normally do not get to go into the working area for safety reasons, and that's absolutely the correct thing and the correct policy. They let me go in, they let me record, and I had a lot of fun hanging out there. That was a great way to spend the day. But can I just say, this thing has got an amazing sound. The exhaust is amazing. The workmanship is amazing. And I'm glad that we took the extra time, energy and effort to do what we did to put this exhaust on this thing. I think it is the right sound for this vehicle. Y'all let me know in the comments what you guys think, especially the before and after. I know the open header was pretty sick, but that's downright rude to be driving that around. This thing, I don't think it's rude, but it's definitely got a presence. Let's take a second and let's get serious and let's talk about what it costs and what it takes to actually get an exhaust on a custom vehicle. Because let's be honest, it's going to be time, it's going to be money, and it's going to be effort. So first, let's start with the time. Call ahead, make an appointment. There's no way you can just drop a car off on a random day during the week and say, hey, I need a full exhaust and I need it by lunchtime. And that'd be realistic. To get the best quality work and the best quality components that you can out of an exhaust, you need to be able to say, hey, I need a complete exhaust. This is the vehicle. These guys are experienced enough to know like, hey, this will take a day and believe them when it takes a day. And if it takes two days, that means it's even more complex and there's more things they have to do to make it work. And it's worth the money to let them do what they need to do because their experience will pay for itself in the quality of the product you get. Now, if you're curious and you wanna get a custom exhaust like this for your pickup truck, long bed, short bed, or muscle car, let me just go ahead and give you a fair warning. It's not a small number, but it's worth it because you're paying for the person's experience and you're paying for their time. Worst thing you can do when you're building a custom car is rush whoever you're working with to complete parts. Like if I said, hey, you got four hours to put an exhaust on this thing, yeah, it could be done, but it would not be the quality that it is right now. The quality on this thing, you know, this was a full day's worth of work. That is a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, and it's a lot of details, and all those little details add up in that time, and they're worth it. This exhaust would run you about $1,100 to $1,300. And if you wanna help the cost of that, if you need something like this done, have your components already. Have good mufflers, have good hangers, have good flex pieces if you need them, have your catalytic converters, have all the pieces and parts that are necessary to make your vehicle legal 
and we'll make it run the best because you know we're all kind of picky about these things i am this thing has a very unique sound and If you made it this far i greatly appreciate it if you're not subscribed please subscribe so that way you know when i'm putting out new videos we're going to continue improving this thing and let's get it closer to being roadworthy because that's got to be next we got to get this thing all the way to the point where we trust it enough to leave the neighborhood right now i don't trust it to leave the neighborhood so in the next one we'll see you then